The Superjet 100 is, or was nowadays, a flagship project for Russia. In the 90s, Sukhoi saw potential in the market for an aircraft with a seat capacity of 80 to 100 seats. You might ask yourself, hasn't the Superjet a seat capacity from about 19 to 100 passengers? Yes, that's right. But originally, three variants were planned, ranging from about 60 to 100 seats. They estimated a demand for about 250 to 300 planes that could sell for a market demand of 800 aircraft in total. But different as you think, the Superjet isn't as Russian as you think. After Sukhoi chose its partner to develop the aircraft with, it was clear that about 55% of all parts will come from various European and US partners. That's why sanctions hit the Superjet very hard. But right from the beginning, the program had massive competition from various other manufacturers. Let's compare the most important ones to the Superjet to get a good picture whether the Superjet was able to compete in the market or not. We compare the date of entry into service, range, efficiency and price. We see that all competing aircraft types had a much earlier entry into service compared to the Superjet 100. That means most of the potential market share was already taken when the Superjet entered service. The range of the Superjet is in the middle. The long range variant of the Superjet has 4500 km range, which would be the same as the E190. In terms of efficiency, we simplified it, but here the Superjet cannot keep up with the CRJs and the Bray 190. The price tag is with 50 million compared with the Superjet's efficiency, not as low as it should be when you want to convince potential customers to buy, in my opinion. However, after the Superjet 100 entered service in a very competitive environment, it had some problems that may contribute to the decision to not buy this jet from most airlines. For example, CityJet had serviceability and reliability issues and that led to longer waiting times. To be specific, the Superjet has a spare parts issue that never really got solved. A Russian newspaper reported that Superjets have an average usage of 3 to 3.7 hours per day in Russia, but a normal usage per day to make a profit is 9 hours typically. Another factor that contributes to long downtimes is that about 10% of the parts in the Superjet come from US companies. So US sanctions delay this further. The Mexican airline Interjet operated a few Superjets but cancelled the remaining ones because it could only operate one third of the Superjets. In 2016 a tail component had a fatigue crack which led to a grounding. The incident list continues with a problem with the horizontal stabilizer which had rear spark cracks. The engine of the Superjet, the SAM146, which is a cooperation between the French Safran and the Russian MPO Saturn of Russia, had to be grounded after only 1500 to 3000 cycles compared to the promised 7000 cycles. But here comes the next big problem of the Superjet, the engine availability. One reason why Superjets can't be flown is because there are often no spare engines when engines have to be replaced. In addition to that, the Superjet 100 after the introduction into service had one accident and one incident which may also lead to fewer sales. In 2012, Sukhoi tried to sell the Superjet 100 and the pilot was in a sales conversation. He ignored the terrain awareness warning system and crashed. One year later, only two years after the Superjet introduction into service, an incident occurred. In Iceland, at the Keflavik airport, a Superjet tried to approach with one engine. They planned a go-around. However, the fatigued pilot throttled the wrong engine. The aircraft hit the runway and sit down with the gear up. 